Welcome back. Clashes at the Red Mosque in the Pakistani capital is the latest upset for President Musharraf's military government. In March, Musharraf's decision to dismiss Chief Justice Chowdhury from the judiciary provoked violent riots in Pakistan's major cities. Musharraf's government is a key U.S. ally in the war on terror and is under pressure to take action against Taliban groups in the country. The fiercely autonomous areas on the Afghan border provide a base for Taliban support. So far, attempts to dominate these areas by force have been unsuccessful. Opposition voices are growing louder too. Exiled Prime Minister Ben Nazir Bhutto spoke out this week. We need a military that takes pride in serving the country, not a military that takes pride in running the country. Nawaz Sharif, the Prime Minister deposed by Musharraf in 1999, hopes to retake the government in elections this year. And we're joined again by our guests in Islamabad, Anis Ahmed, the Chancellor of Rifah International University, and in London, Kamal Halbawi, Chairman of the Centre for the Study of Terrorism. Our other guest, uh, Sher Afghan Niazi, in Islamabad, seemed to be unhappy at the first half of the programme. Hopefully we can get him back, but he seemed to have stormed out of the studio. Anis Ahmed, if I could go to mm. you in Islamabad. Yes. A lot of the anti-Musharraf rhetoric that uh, we hear, particularly from the madrasas, deals with Musharraf's attitudes and alliance with President Bush. Do you think that if Pakistan's relationship with the U.S. changed, then those attitudes from the madrasas would change as well? You see, Pakistan's attitude towards uh, America as such has always been friendly. Till American policies start hurting Muslims all over the world, in Palestine, in other areas, Iraq, war. And those issues actually created an environment of hatred among people of Pakistan against the state of America, not Americans. Secondly, when we talk about uh, Madaris as becoming a uh, breeding ground for violence, we should never forget Madaris have been there for 15 centuries and they have been a source of providing respectable position to people in the society, giving them education, manners, politeness, humbleness. Nevertheless, use of these Madaris by America in Afghan war and later on other political uh, reasons projected Madaris as uh, a source of disturbance. Let me also say that this has become uh, perhaps a tool to create environment against religion as such. I believe religion and spirituality has always been a factor in human history to create enlightenment, politeness, cordiality, a dialogue. Unfortunately, with the projection of these madaris, which have some extreme views, the impression is conveyed that religion as such is cause of violence and terror. And that I challenge historically. Thirdly, I believe that President Musharraf's policies in the country are not only uh, because of uh, his attitude to the madaris, but people have more serious problems. The hike in prices, insecurity in the country, a polarization that uh, May 12 event of Karachi. Okay, I'd like to bring I'd to like people. to bring Kamal Halbawi in here talking about some of those more serious issues perhaps. Is the divide in Pakistan really between the more secular minded and the more religious minded or is it more civilian versus military? What do you think? It is it it it, it is now mostly between civilians and the people of Pakistan and between the military, especially, especially the government, because I am sure that the military is a part of Pakistan and they love their people and they care for their people, but they have orders and they are, uh, uh, th their jobs are there. So it is, it, it, it is a policy and the strategy of uh, President Musharraf or General Musharraf, if you say, is, is dividing the country and the dividing the ideas of the people and the dividing the political parties. But they are trying many times in the recent uh, decade, there have been alliance between all political parties in uh, Pakistan, sometimes led by Maulana Fadl Rahman, sometimes led by Imqadu Hussein Ahmed, 
and sometimes by others. So the people can come together and there is no problem about the freedom of thought and the freedom of expression and the freedom of ideas, whether uh, religious uh, leaders or secular and liberal uh, leaders. Uh, you were talking now to li listening to Benazir Bhutto and uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif and their days, although it was different from the al Haq, but they were more comfortable to the people. And when the military comes in and they do not see except their own ideas and terms, especially with the relationship with the, the, the most uh, uh, and the only superpower like America, who is dictating from day to day, then Musharraf is, uh, is, is, is really a very uh, poor uh, president in Pakistan. Okay, if I can he go to Anis Ahmed in, in Islamabad. In a, in Anis a Ahmed, uh, trouble looking, trouble at the issue, looking at the issue that we have in front of us with the Red Mosque, uh, we've got Molana Abdul Aziz Ghazi arrested. How can we expect him to be treated? Well, I think uh, the law of land uh, and our judiciary, I trust, in the um, present situation, it has come up with uh, the true spirit of uh, justice in the country. And I fully trust my country's judiciary. I understand a case will be uh, registered against him, and our judiciary will be very much fair in providing him a chance to be heard and make up their mind. Since the matter is now subjudice, I don't think we should make any comments on that. And how, how to end the standoff looking forward? Are you optimistic that the standoff can be ended peacefully between the government and the Red Mosque? I, ha I am always optimistic about my country. I find that my country, even the army as such, does not have any problem with the people. It is the army rule and the ruler who has been the target of criticism, not the army as such. Therefore, I am very much optimistic. I believe that if things move amicably, then we can uh, repair the situation and we can create peace and understanding among the people. This was one single school in Islamabad, capital city, not so far away from presidency and parliament, yet for six months state did not take appropriate steps, did not show seriousness which led to the situation. If a state was serious about it, yeah. we could have done it much earlier. All right, Anis Ahmed, you say if the state was serious about it, it could have been ended earlier. Kamal Halbawi, do you agree? Do you think that the, there can be a solution to the problem? I, uh, I, I do appreciate very much what uh, Dr. Anis said. But uh, in fact, I see that uh, the situation is aggravating and becoming more serious, not in its own, but in view of other problems related to that situation and the way the government is treating people. For example, Maulana, before he goes to the judiciary and enjoy a fair trial, you don't know what will happen in security departments and security areas and circles and what will happen to him and to his family and to his friends and to his neighbors. This is the policy of the third countries in general. And I'm sure that Dr. Anis Okay, Dr. Kamal Halbawi, I'm going to have to stop you there. I'm sorry, sir, we've run out of time. And Anis Ahmed, okay. thank you, Dr. Kamal Halbawi and Anis Ahmed in Islamabad for your opinions. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Please email them to us at InsideStory.com. At aljazeera.net. Goodbye for now.